for our next project, we're going to do a hexagon. And what I thought I'd do is, is to show you a little more technique. Uh, we're going to go back to the molding, the pre-finished stock I made that octagon out of earlier. Um, material like this, if you flip it upside down, there's a real good chance you're going to blow out the miters. So what we're going to do is show you a little different technique to show you how to prevent that. Now, this particular material has 15 sixteenths of an inch in width outside the rabbet on the molding. The frame we're going to build is going to be six-sided, but we're going to do a creative frame. What we're going to do is an illustration, just like A, of a hexagon where we have four short sides, two long sides, and we're going to do it for an 8 by 10. Now, you notice on the 8 by 10, the length of the red rabbit is 4 and 5 eighths. The length of the blue rabbit is 5 and 3 eighths. Now, if we swing over to the third page, what you're going to notice is at 15 sixteenths of an inch increase in width, we have to add 1 and a sixteenth increase in length. So what this tells us, on the red rabbit, where the length is 4 and 5 eighths, we add 1 and a sixteenth inches. Our outside length would be 5 and 11 sixteenths for the red sides. The blue rabbit is 5 and 3 eighths. We add an inch and fifth. Uh, an inch and a sixteenth to that dimension, we come up with six and seven sixteenths. That's the outside length of the blue side. So just this simply, we know exactly how long our sides need to be cut. Pre-finished molding is usually pretty expensive, and I really don't want to waste any of it. So what I want to do is show you what I think would be the simplest, most economical technique to do this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use both sides. We're going to move from one side to the other. So we set up to do our hexagon. That's a six line. And I'm going to take my molding, which is quite long. And we're going to bring that blade up a little bit. And we're going to cut one end. Now, just so I don't waste very much material, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come right off that point. I need to finish my long sides at 6 and 7 sixteenths. I'm going to give it just a little bit extra there. I don't, I don't want to take any chance with any tear out on the opposite side. Okay? So what I'm going to do double check that. I'm going to position that mark right there at the edge. And I think what I want to do is actually bring my stop system in on the other side. I want to use this as my stop. Get that pen out of my hand. That would give me the rough length for the long ones. I need 5 and 11 sixteenths. Again, we're going to go long on that a little bit. And again, I'm going to use the stop on the other side. This is just to keep me from wasting a lot of material.
that does our rough cut. Just call me Grace. Our two long sides need to finish six and seven sixteenths. My four short sides need to finish five and eleven sixteenths. I always want to double check these once you cut them. It's too late. Now I'm going to adjust my end block right out to the edge. I want to make sure I've got this backed up well. And I'm going to bring that in. Slide the stop. You know, one of the things that we talked about earlier was blowing the material out. And I have to admit, I messed up on this frame. I intentionally picked up an 80 tooth cutoff blade to do my miters with. And it's laying over there. I'm using a 40 tooth combination blade, but the thing I want you to notice Okay, and I'm going to try to get a few of these up there just to make sure you know I'm not deceiving you in any way. There is not one bit of tear out on any of these cuts because of the way we worked. Okay? We're using a blade we really shouldn't be using on a project like this and we're still getting better results than you will with any other way of working. Now, Let's see what we made. Now, you notice that when we did those cuts, I cut the long sides first. That's something you always want to do. Always cut the long ones first because if you mess one of them up, you can still make a short one out of it. Okay. I mean, you don't want to be spending $12 a linear foot for kindling. Eight and the sixteenth by ten and a thirty second for our inside opening. That frame is perfect in no time at all. And now we're going to get ready to show you how to cut a panel to fit inside this. One of the things that's nice about working with hexagons is other than squaring cuts you make on the panel, every cut you do is done at 30 degrees. That makes this a very, very simple project. Now, just to confirm my dimensions, okay, uh, 
We can go 8 and about a 30 second by 10 for our panel. So what we're going to do, well that end is not even close to square. We're going to cut it and flip it. There's our length. Bring up that edge. Now, since we have a point on both ends, that point needs to be centered. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to go right at just a hair over four inches. Okay. We're going to set our angle to 30 degrees. You put the long side, okay, the side that, that's going to be parallel to the long side of the front. You bring your mark right to the edge. Flip it. Cut the corners. Now, there's your finished hexagon frame. Simple as can be.